Hi there, everyone. I'm Sean Tracy, and for those that don't know me, I'm the technical director of content here at Cloud Imperium Games. And today, I'm really lucky to be able to show you a feature that I'm personally really excited about. And this is a collaboration between Faceware Technologies and Cloud Imperium Games. And what I'm going to show you is how we've integrated facial tracking into Star Citizen. So to start showing this technology, the first thing I want to enable is the Live SDK technology. So the collaboration between Cloud Imperium Games and Faceware. And here I am. You can see that there's a bunch of different dots on my face, and these are landmark points that we use for facial tracking, and the tracking is quite intelligent. So as I turn my head and a face is lost, we actually disable the facial tracking. And if I turn this way, uh, this is handy for things like occlusion. So if your hand gets in the way, uh, maybe a pen gets in the way, uh, we disable the facial tracking at those instants. Now, you're not here to see my face. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this actually maps to a character. So you may recognize this gentleman. This is Liam Cunningham, who plays Captain White in Squadron 42. Uh, one of the really important things to notice, um, or to note rather, is that this is still early days with this technology. Um, we're doing a lot to map and to improve the quality of the actual tracking, as well as adding new phonemes in uh, to the tracking so that the runtime logic reacts exactly as we expect it to. So this is never meant to be a replacement for facial animation, but rather something for the players to be able to run and to uh, drive an actor in real time, or, or a character rather, in real time. This will be exciting for community endeavors like uh, Machinima videos, or uh, maybe even getting integrated to character creators so that you can make your character, but then you can even see how they would express themselves um, given different inputs of emotions. So I just wanted to pull his face around a little bit so you can see the reactions of our runtime rig logic. So to explain how this all kind of works is that we've got a bunch of outputs that happen uh, from the live SDK technology. And then through a layer called motion logic, we map all of that to inputs of our runtime rig. And since every character within Star Citizen has its own unique runtime rig created dynamically, um, they will always react appropriately to whatever the inputs are. So it won't exactly be my blinks, it'll be Liam Cunningham's blinks. You can see even things like the ears moving when the scalp moves. And we even track the eyes. So let's go ahead and show how actually uh, different bits of rig logic might react a little bit differently, um, giving uh, a, a different character essentially. So we've gone from a tier zero rig down to a tier two rig. And the only real difference is that this is more indicative of what a player will have. Um, and truly what changes is just the blend shapes as well as the uh, um, uh, wrinkle maps uh, that play on the specific player. So this is Steiger. You might recognize him from Pupil to Planet videos. <laughs> the mapping is changing very dramatically. Uh, this is Haynes. Haynes is a very different uh, face than really I have, uh, obviously. And it works at all different distances. If we start pulling out, you can see that the mapping still holds up. As Belosa, um, he has uh, really quite nice um, wrinkle maps that happen on the side of his face. So if I pull my face to the side. Mm -hmm. Where this feature really comes into its own is in the combination of it with our VoIP technology. All right, so here we are in multiplayer. Uh, you should be seeing me speak from uh, Vincent's perspective, and this is all being sent over the network and unwrapped on the client side. So Vincent uh, was kind enough to get a couple of staff together so that we could show you this feature. Uh, thanks a lot for doing that, Vincent. No problem, that's what we're here for. Awesome, so I think one of the best ways that we can do this is uh, maybe just everyone introduce themselves real quickly. Okay, I'll go ahead and start. My name is Vincent Sinatra. I'm the QA manager here in Los Angeles. My name is Julia Wilson. I'm a QA senior here in Los Angeles. And I'm Andrew Hernando. I am a QA tester here in Los Angeles. 
Awesome. So uh, maybe to show how this can uh, really sort of be driven from the player side, um, Vincent, uh, you've really got some good eyebrow tracking. Why don't you uh, show me those eyebrows? <laughs> right on. That looks cool. Uh, uh, Julia, uh, uh, show me happy. <laughs> That's pretty close. All right. And then, uh, Andrew, why don't you show me some angry? That's perfect. Fantastic. We've talked about how this feature can work on a consumer level web camera. However, here's Peter Bush from Faceware to talk about a motion sensor they've developed specifically for this feature. Hi, my name is Peter Bush. I'm one of the co founders of Faceware Technologies and Faceware Interactive. Faceware is a facial motion capture company. We create hardware and software products that can create animation simply from video. About a year ago, Cloud Imperium asked us to do something we've never done before integrate our real-time technology into engine and allow game characters to interact in emote in real time, but by being live driven by the players themselves. This is quite an engineering challenge, but I knew my teams in Austin and Los Angeles could collaborate with the incredibly talented Cloud Imperium development team to make this happen. The new FOIP feature will work with nearly any camera, but we were asked what's going to create the best possible experience. So we set out to engineer the first gaming device designed specifically for facial tracking. Here it is, the first prototype facial motion sensor. This is the first one off the production line. Now there are many specs about this device that are going to give you the best possible experience for facial tracking. First, the image sensor runs at 60 frames per second. Now while that's important is the way in which our technology works. From one video frame to the next, we basically can create an animated result meaning what we see in that first video frame, we're gonna analyze the expression on your face, and by the next video frame, we have that animated result. So the faster that that frame rate is running, the faster you're going to be able to keep up and get that performance. And at 1 25th or 1 30th of a second, which is common in most webcams, it might not keep up and your lip sync might not read. But at 1 60th of a second, now the words that you're saying are gonna be spoken by your character running in game. Now second, we looked at where most common you're going to be using this device. And more often than not, you're only going to be lit by the light coming from your monitor. So the sensor had to work in a low light environment. So we selected a 1 3rd inch 3.4 megapixel sensor that's capable of 720 or 1080 at 60 frames per second in a near dark environment. Third, most webcams are a wide angle lens, which makes your face a little bit smaller in frame and a lot less facial details and facial pixels for our technology to capture and track. So we selected a single user field of view. Now this allows our technology to basically get more pixels from your face from that frame and get the best possible facial details in the engine. Now fourth, we put on a high resolution glass lens that's going to resolve that data and give us the best possible and sharpest focus for facial tracking. These specs are going to allow you to have the best possible experience with the new FOIP feature. While this is only a prototype, we're going to go into mass production and we're going to bring this to you. We've been working on this technology for nearly seven years, but this is the first game that's wanted to integrate this into engine and allow character to character communication like you've never seen before. We're excited to bring this to Star Citizen and we can't wait to see what you do with it. All right, so as you've seen, it's still early days and we've got a little bit more work to do uh, on the facial mapping, some of the phoneme extraction to make sure that it looks really accurate, but even in this really early implementation, I think it shows a lot of promise and I really hope that you'd agree. Having integrated this technology, there's a lot of ideas and things we wanted to try with it. So one of the ideas that uh, we came up with was that because we already know the position of the face itself, uh, we actually know where the head is. So we can do something uh, pretty exciting that I find very fun, um, is head tracking. So as I move my head, in real life, all the camera is moved, just as if you were driving a track IR sort of simulation. But this is, again, all from a consumer level web camera. So this actually adds quite a bit. Um, I find that this gives me a ton of situational awareness when I'm flying around. I can just move my head a little bit more. I can check on my power, check on my shields. I can even inspect things a little bit up close if I combine this with zoom. So there we got some towers over there. up. You can even do crazy stuff like rolls. So 
we'll do the other way. And it's kind of fun if we combine it with this. So here I'll try to keep my head on the horizon until it's just too much. And then we put it back over and maybe look up. Let's see if we can see anything from Levski there. Oh yeah, cool. All right, and then we'll roll it back over. Uh, one of these, whoop, that was the other way. And there we go. So as you can see, um, it all it is very natural, um, and you can just look around within it. And again, it's kind of coming for free because we are already tracking the facial position, so we can extrapolate from that what the head position is. So as you can see, the collaboration between Faceware and Cloud Imperium Games, even in this early stage of development, is already breaking new ground and doing things that haven't really been seen before. So we're really excited to develop these features and we can't wait to get them to you. So until then, this is Sean Tracy from Cloud Imperium Games Los Angeles saying goodbye. Eric's got a little song that he sometimes kind of comes and sings and it looks pretty awesome so uh you want to take take it away <laughs> i once was a man outside perfect